Hey guys, Will here. Today we're gonna look at this bird versus this bird. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining me. So today what I wanted to look at is see if my Mavic Mini 1 can outfly my old Mavic Pro 1 which has AukuSync. Now that it has remote hack, now that I know that passive boosters work well in boosting it, that or you can use the Yagi's, right? Two passive boosters. Can this fly farther than an AukuSync, right? I guess you can say it's a comparison of also a person who's educated and a person who's just flying whatever stock one is out there. And then also you can say maybe this is somewhat can give you an information of a Mavic Mini 1 that compares to a Mavic Mini 2. Mavic Mini 2 uses 2.0, not the 1.0 of this. But if this can beat this, then we know for sure, right? That Mavic Mini 2 should beat this Mavic Mini 1, despite has a booster despite remote hack, right? At least we can find that data. But if this can be to this Mavic Pro, then it's possible maybe this can be to Mavic Mini 2, right? So we know that the Mavic Mini 2, no hacks available, nothing available right now is brand new. It uses the same remote as a Mavic Air 2. So don't expect anything to come out of it, right? So there's more flexibility with a Mavic Mini 1, right? So if you have that and you're trying to squeeze more more kind of performance out of it, then you probably can check my, some of my old videos like the remote hack and stuff like that. So that's what we want to find out. C territory, full urban and SD environments, all the kind of interference, commercial, apartment building, etc. Launch from an elevated launch site. So there is no physical obstacles, no physical interference, just the cleanest data, just electronic interference so both are flying to same route same toward the same landmark and with the antennas correctly pointed from the remote to those landmarks and uh so let's get to the data and see what we find out okay the results and the results is no the mavic mini despite all of remote hacks and passive boosters like the parabolic cannot be just a stock mavic pro one using ocusync 1.0 and here you can see the difference a 43 versus 1009 between here and here and uh, so I think we can make a educated guess that or conclusion that the Mavic Mini 2 with Augusting 2.0 can beat any kind of Mavic Mini despite the Mavic Mini having any kind of hack or excessive like in addition to the, the, some kind of passive booster and some kind of combination of those sorts right and this is to remind you full urban ce territory i have a fcc mavic mini if, if you care to know about that and here's the different numbers and you can see stock uh, unusable stock blackout parabolic unusable parabolic blackout yagi unusable yagi blackout and the reason why i have this sort of extra data was because the mavic pro one had this really annoying behavior where it, it kind of bucked like a bronco right it's just twerking in the air acting all wild basically it's a nine meter per second drone and at that point consider the unusable when it hit below two meters per second at that time it's basically just crawling in the air and it's bucking in the air like going full and back and i just don't have control of the drone so i don't even consider it usable anything after it despite it blacking out later so it's sort of like the video link stronger but the actual usage of the drone is limited so i feel very compelled to put this data in to compare. So as you see, Mavic Mini 1 with the all the doodads, remote hack. Normally I would say that without the remote hack, I get around 300. So with the remote hack, you get a little bit slight boost. You can say it's more, maybe I get around 300 to 500, 300, and then remote hack 500, right? And then you can see uh, with the stock Mavic Pro, much farther, about double, right? So still a farther drone, the OcuSync is a better signal quality. And then if you did all the parabolic with the remote hack, and then you compare that with the stock usable, then it's a thousand. But then if you add the parabolics into the Mavic Pro, oh, you then it separates, you get a little bit more space, right? So 843 to 1300. And then, wow, I wanna show what the difference, this huge difference, it becomes like very transparent. That uh, in Yagi's, I don't know why for me, is consistent the yagis always perform slightly less than the parabolic i don't know why so it's even lower 790 739 
as opposed to A43 and the AkiSync 1.0 Mavic Pro responded heavily because I just got some Yagis for it. And uh, normally you can see, as you can see, the boost for the boost for the parabolics on the Mavic Pro is so little that normally I don't even bother using it. But wow, the boost on it is, if you look at like a stock unusable one, thousand and then going to the Yagi unusable over double quite impressive so if you have the Mavic Pro 1 this is like a, a conclusion that I didn't intend for the Mavic Pro 1 OcuSync responds heavily with the for the Yagi passive booster so that's something you probably want to invest in and I would say that I think you can get despite the Mavic Air 2 and Mavic Mini 2 they use the same remote I think you can get Yagi's for them so those you might want to invest in in terms of hacking there's no hacks available i would say they're quite close i you know even i would say if you don't own can i make this conclusion if you don't know a mavic mini 2 or mavic mini 1 always just get the mavic mini 2 it's better it's worth all the upgrades for the slight increase in price but if you have a mavic mini 1 there's definitely a lot of tweaks like you can check my past videos like remote hack whatever fcc stuff like that just tweaks to improve it so it makes it a very hard decision to upgrade into the Mavic Mini 2. It's not a substantial upgrade. And in addition to that, the Mavic Mini 1, since you can do remote hack and there's just more stuff available for it, it can be maybe more fun. Uh, because for example, Leechy, which is a third party app that gives you more smart features for your drone, is available for the Mavic Mini 1 and then not the Mavic Mini 2. And I definitely will have, I just got it and I'm starting to test out some of the smart features and I can say that it's definitely fun and you won't see it in the Mavic Mini 2 for at least six months because the ST, SDK is not out, so they can't. So basically there's more flexibility with the Mavic Mini 1. So if you are an owner, you might want to keep it and you might want to do some performance upgrades like the remote hacks, passive boosters. You might want to get the Leechy app and get some more function and features out of your Mavic Mini instead of just upgrading to the Mavic Mini 2. So uh, subscribe if you're interested in seeing some more videos on the Mavic Mini. I'm definitely going to do some Leechy videos. I just want to thoroughly, thoroughly test them out before I just I don't want to just like uh, reiterate and read off of the website of what the functions are. I'm actually going to test it and see what the pros and cons. Because I, for example, I already found a problem with the follow feature when I was using it. And if you want to know what the problem is, what the good and bad of it is, you have to subscribe because I'm going to go through that in the tutorial about it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. And upcoming is all of the actual footage of these flight. See you next time.